This is Pop Health Week on Healthcare Now Radio. I'm Greg Masters, Managing Director of Health Innovation Media and the producer co-host of the show. Joining me in the virtual studio is co-founder and principal co-host at Pop Health Week, Fred Goldstein, President of Accountable Health, LLC. Pop Health Week engages industry leadership and stakeholder voices spanning payer, provider, patient, vendor, and regulatory communities in population health best practices and strategies. Connect with us at www.popupstudio.productions or follow and direct message me on Twitter via Greg Masters MPH. And that's Greg with two G's. On today's episode, our guest is Mark Clements, MD, PhD, a fellow in the American Academy of Pediatrics, serving as the chief medical officer at digital health innovator Gluco, a market leader in the diabetes data management solutions space. And with that introduction, Fred, over to you. Thanks so much, Greg. And Dr. Clements, welcome to Pop Health Week. Uh, Thanks so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to get you on today. We're going to discuss some interesting things around remote patient monitoring, et cetera. But before we get into that, give us a little bit of your background and experience. Sure. I am a pediatric endocrinologist. I'm a practicing clinician. I'm also a clinical researcher and clinical trialist. Uh, I practice in a setting where we provide care for about 2,400 youth and young adults with uh, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. I joined Gluco as the chief medical officer in 2019 and served on the medical advisory board for over four years before that. Fantastic. So why don't you give us a little bit of background on Gluco before we get into some of their work? Sure. You know, Gluco was formed in approximately 2010 as a a connected device company, really trying to solve the problem of how to get data out of those pesky blood glucose meters and into software that would allow one to visualize one's own data and share those data with their trusted healthcare provider. Uh, Over time, we have really grown uh, far beyond that. We've got over 250 connected devices on our platform. So we are a data integration system. We are a system that enhances the therapeutic alliance between an individual with diabetes and now other chronic diseases and their a trusted healthcare provider, and we are also uh, working on population health management tools and precision uh, behavioral engagement tools, et cetera. So we've really evolved. And in terms, of, it sounds like you're device agnostic in terms of people can come with any device and link up to your system? Uh, that's right. We link up with over 95% of devices in the diabetes marketplace. Got it. And how long has Gluco been around? Since approximately 2010. So 12, 12 good years so far. That's right. Interesting. And, and early on, obviously, there's been a lot of change in terms of both the technology and the analytics, et cetera. Um, is that an area you've focused on as this company's move forward? Sure. We've seen an evolution from blood glucose meters to continuous glucose monitors to programmed insulin pumps to uh, artificial intelligence-driven insulin pumps that automatically deliver insulin to a smart connected Bluetooth insulin pens. We've been there for all of it. Wow. And is your typical um, client provider practices? Are you selling to payers, both? How does that work? Yes. Traditionally, our clients have been providers, but we are also beginning to partner with employers and payers in the marketplace. Uh, We also have an interesting uh, clinical research vertical. So we are partnering with device manufacturers and life science, pharmaceutical companies, because we've realized that this connected care platform really helps clinical trials that need to be decentralized in a post-pandemic world that need to provide more remote touch points with their participants, et cetera. And, And of course, we're entering a brave new world of remote patient monitoring, and many clinicians and health systems around North America, and in fact, around the world, are trying to Uh, wrap their heads around how to deliver care more remotely and to monitor patients even when they're not in clinic. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about uh, these clinical trials, is is that specifically focused in diabetes? Are you doing other areas as well or looking into that? A lot of the trials are in diabetes, but we are not necessarily exclusive to diabetes. So glucose turns out to be a pretty important output for 
uh, a lot of diseases uh, in terms of safety monitoring, et cetera. And as I mentioned, we are uh, expanding our focus beyond diabetes into neighboring conditions. Mm -hmm. Is this is the is the glucose system sort of a plug and play? You you take the monitoring information, the devices feed it in, and then they just plug into your system and can feed that data into their electronic health records, et cetera. That's correct. We have a variety of mechanisms to consume data into the glucose system. We have an in clinic transmitter that makes it really simple. Instead of a tangle of cables and uh, different software to try to get device data. Um, uh, into software systems. Uh, we have simplified that. You lay a device on a simple transmitter box in the clinic, you plug it in, or it is read wirelessly. You don't even have to have a connection to your hospital's uh, Wi-Fi or computer systems that can go to Gluco right over the cellular network. And then it's available for clinicians to visualize. And are you doing the wraparound, say, care management services, or is that typically done by the provider in your model? So historically, we have provided the data to enable providers to provide the wraparound care services. However, uh, we have a number of business partnerships that do allow us to provide uh, care management solutions. As I mentioned, it has been challenging for health systems to pivot to provide chronic care management and remote patient monitoring services because one has to redirect or reallocate um, the effort by a lot of clinic staff in order to make that happen. So it is possible uh, for a company like Gluco to assist in that uh, with the actual uh, uh, clinical expertise from some of our partners. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of players, obviously, in this space. Diabetes is a huge problem in the United States, around the world, growing like crazy. How, how do you differentiate your services from some of the other providers out there? That's a very good question. I think that strengthening the therapeutic alliance between the person with diabetes or another chronic disease and their trusted healthcare um, provider is in our DNA. You will find that a lot of other solutions disintermediate the healthcare team. They sort of operate in a parallel universe and they don't report back to the, that trusted healthcare provider. Uh, Gluco never wants to disintermediate the medical home. We want to actually strengthen and enable the medical home. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the data you gather, obviously there's a lot of useful information in this stuff as it comes in. How do you sort of sift that or to ensure that providers aren't overloaded with information? As well as I know you talk about doing some predictive work and maybe you can discuss that as well. Sure. The glucose summary reports really provide a mechanism for providers to follow the decision-making heuristics that are natural. So we really have a deep understanding of how providers think. We can start at the very surface level and raise some general risk metrics so that providers can see how much time an individual is spending with high blood sugars and low blood sugars. We can also uh, help the provider at a glance to see how much insulin is being used uh, for meals, for corrections, uh, for basal insulin. And then the provider can start to drill down, uh, can drill down into a modal day report that helps the provider see what the patterns of rise and fall are before and after meals, overnight while sleeping, et cetera. And then one can drill down even further into daily patterns and even hourly patterns to see how specific behaviors are eliciting specific responses. For instance, uh, you know, what is the uh, glycemic content, protein and fat, uh, fat content of a meal? Uh, when did exercise occur? How did that impact the glycemic response, et cetera? So we really start at the 10,000 foot view and help the provider follow the decision-making that's really natural to drill down into the specific behaviors that are beginning the responses. And do you have results, Dr. Clements, outcomes that you've reported based on the use of your system? We do. We did conduct a clinical trial. Uh, that clinical trial has been presented at uh, uh, some uh, major diabetes conferences, and we do see significant results. Uh, when Gluco's uh, mobile app and clinician platform are paired with a remote patient monitoring program, 
uh, which essentially means that um, there are uh, the opportunities for visits on a weekly or biweekly basis uh, during the uh, treatment portion. We see a significant reduction in hemoglobin A1C, the major biomarker uh, for diabetes glycemic outcomes. Uh, we also uh, see improvements in uh, the average glucose and the time spent in the hyperglycemic range, et cetera. And if we look at individuals who begin with a very high hemoglobin A1C, uh, above what one would consider the average for the population, we see an even bigger improvement. So I think that uh, we, we've got strong uh, outcomes from our clinical trial that uh, uh, cause us to really endorse the product we've created uh, for individuals and their providers. Mm -hmm. And have, have you been able to take any of that um, outcomes data and begin to correlate that with utilization or cost for services? Yes, we, we've actually done some initial work. Uh, that work is being presented this year, so I won't speak about it in detail, but uh, uh, you will see it uh, upcoming meetings, we will be reporting on uh, the uh, fact that we can reduce the uh, predicted rate of diabetes-related complications uh, through the reductions in A1C, and that really becomes uh, cost-beneficial to clinics that are implementing the Gluco platform uh, or to payers that are paying for the Gluco platform when it comes to the uh, overall costs at one, three, and five years. Uh -huh. As clinics or payers and the others begin to look into this and, and, and let's say they're saying, hey, we want to set up a, a, a much more broadly based diabetes care management program or chronic disease program, what are some of the things that they should consider or be aware of before they step into this space? Sure. The first is that when you think about our platform as simply a data integration platform, historically it has lived as a cost center on most diabetes centers budgets. But when you think about it as a tool to allow your clinic to access the CCM or uh, remote patient monitoring CPT codes, uh, all of a sudden it becomes a revenue center uh, on your budget. And in order to shift the resources, the personnel resources in the clinic towards supporting chronic care management and remote patient monitoring, it's really important to start small and to create a roadmap uh, so that you can slowly um, uh, accelerate uh, from zero experience doing remote patient monitoring visits, for instance, uh, to making it a routine part of your weekly practice. Uh, it's really difficult to go from zero to 100 uh, in this work just because it's such a significant shift. And most clinics and hospitals aren't used to implementing that kind of change management really rapidly. It can be very disruptive. So my recommendation is typically that uh, systems implement uh, quality improvement methods. They perform small tests of change. They track those tests of change in plan, do, study, act cycles, and that they really identify a clinician champion or a diabetes educator champion in the clinic uh, who owns the process who identifies the early adopters in the practice who will uh, test things out, kick the tires, et cetera, and then who will uh, start to advocate for that change with some of their peers uh, who trust their opinions. And if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Pop Health Week on Healthcare Now Radio. Our guest is Dr. Mark Clements, the Chief Medical Officer at Gluco, a digital health innovator and market leader in the diabetes data management solutions space. That's, that's some great advice. And as you think about this, you obviously talked about the CCM codes and remote patient monitoring. It's great to have CPT codes for these. And Greg and I have been discussing the whole issue of fee-for-service medicine for a long time. Obviously, you know, this is, this is something that makes sense in a different way in a value-based model, and, and that gets back to your outcomes and costs. So I guess once we see some of the data you're going to put out, it may make sense then that you fund it off of that type of a arrangement versus, oh, we need a code, we got a bill for it. Absolutely. This platform is really tailor-made for value-based care. Uh, I think it uh, makes a ton of sense. Uh, the um, entire field of remote patient monitoring and chronic care management also just generally plays very well 
in the context of a value-based care program. Mm -hmm. And that brings up another issue. There are, you know, remote patient monitoring companies for all kinds of different disease states or conditions. And as a practice looking at this, you suddenly say to yourself, wow, how many of these different vendors do I have to bring in here? Is it, are you looking to go beyond just diabetes and glucose management and begin to assist in other areas that might be beneficial to have these types of tools? We are. So we're first looking at neighboring conditions. So uh, you could imagine, for instance, that uh, hypertension and cardiovascular disease are diseases that um, are really comorbid with diabetes. They really affect a lot of individuals with diabetes and they affect the uh, practices and care teams that are providing care. And uh, as a result, it makes the most sense for us to start with those conditions and then to uh, expand uh, iteratively beyond those over time. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. And in terms of the at the end of the day, it's the it's the individual out there using the systems. What's been the response from your uh, the patients using these tools through the practice? Yeah, you know, we uh, a number of years ago began to provide the Gluco mobile application uh, freely on the app stores for individuals with diabetes, uh, whether or not their um, healthcare systems subscribe subscribe to the Gluco service. We also provide a number of uh, digital therapeutics that can be prescribed by health systems. Uh, we have a mobile insulin dose titration system, for instance, uh, for adjusting basal insulin in individuals with type two diabetes. And I would say that uh, the persons with diabetes are most excited about the tools that allow them to see all of their data in one place, that allow them to really dive deep and understand uh, what's happening in their daily patterns of activity and their diet and how that influences their disease outcomes. Uh, so as a result, uh, they get frustrated by the very siloed and segmented ecosystem created by, by just having so many devices out there. Uh, and uh, Gluco's role in bringing them all together uh, helps them, uh, I would say, simplify uh, uh, in a very significant way. I mean, you know, they, they not only can track data from their diabetes self-management devices, but we have really simple tools, of uh, uh, voice to text tools for them to enter uh, diet information and log their foods. They can connect their uh, fitness wearable to the glucose system. So they can really start to see a lot of their activities of daily living and their habits uh, in the context of their diabetes. Mm -hmm. You know, I've used a lot of these different tools just for fun, not a diabetic, but you know, whether it's the watches or the different devices that have come out over, over the decades and, and particularly in terms of trying to log meals has always been just a problematic issue. You know, have you come up with some ways to simplify that? Well, I, I really recommend that you go out and try our user interface because I think we have a best in class user interface for doing this. Uh, I think that there, uh, we're constantly watching the field as it moves forward. You know, there are academic researchers that are using things like uh, remote food photography and um, tagged uh, photos of meals. Uh, we found that so far, what's really ready for prime time in the marketplace is just a very simple, uh, user interface to enter um, the names of your foods. And, you know, if you, you can open the Gluco app and you can say, I had a cheeseburger and a side salad, and it will pull both of those up. And uh, you can say, yes, that's what I ate and log it. That simple. Uh huh. Fantastic. Yeah, that was always something as I'm scrolling through different meal things or different things. You looked at the different apps trying to keep up with that was always uh, difficult. I did look at some of the photo ones and they struggled too in some sense. Yeah. Well, and it is important to distinguish that uh, there are quite a few applications out there for individuals with diabetes or other chronic disease, and the vast majority of them on the app stores are uh, not FDA cleared. They're not validated for safety, and the Gluco app is. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's been a major, major issue, obviously. There are thousands of apps out there. Most of them are not built on anything really scientific to speak of, and people just download those things and, and then hope something works. Do you see and track things like, um, particularly in your ones that people are downloading themselves, utilization over time and things like that? Uh, we can track utilization on the Gluco platform, if that's the question you're asking. Yes, we so we can see what engagement looks like. And in fact, uh, you asked a little bit earlier about predictive models. So one of the things we're 
uh, looking at is, you know, we, we are sitting on top of um, one of the largest repositories of daily diabetes self-management information on the planet. And one really wants to think about uh, how we can utilize that information to improve the care of individuals, right? So um, one way, one example uh, that we started with is that we can actually predict individuals that are uh, likely to disengage with the mobile application. And we can surface that to their healthcare provider so that their healthcare provider can then decide whether to intervene and re-engage them, which might help them become more successful, for instance, on a remote patient monitoring program. Sure, no, that's a great example of that. And in terms of that data set, do you have that available for others to access or use, or is that just internally done? Are you, uh, for example, you know, de-identifying the individuals and then having that data sold or used by others? So uh, Gluco uses the information on our platform for internal feature development. Uh, we never uh, make data available uh, contrary to the terms of use on our platform. So it is the case that we want, you know, again, we want to support innovation in the diabetes field. And if the individual um, users' terms of use uh, suggest that we can de-identify information and learn from it or share it with others uh, so that they can learn from it uh, and develop new features, again, that will feed back into the diabetes ecosystem, only under th those circumstances uh, do we share information externally. That makes sense. Where, where do you see this field going, say, in the next five years, and what excites you the most about it? Well, I think we've come a long way from the discovery of insulin. Uh, we have seen, you know, the advent of glucose monitoring devices and insulin delivery devices and even automated insulin delivery systems. I think the next frontier is uh, behavior. We know that diabetes and other chronic conditions are managed 10% uh, at the physiologic level and 90% at the behavioral level. And I don't mean to suggest that the burden of behavior is entirely on the individual with diabetes. When I say behavior, I mean the behavior of the person with diabetes or chronic disease and the behavior of their healthcare team. So we think that we are sitting in a prime position uh, to develop systems for precision engagement, precision engagement of the person uh, with diabetes or chronic disease and precision engagement of the healthcare team. Could we, for instance, in the future, see tools that help support um, individuals before they're about to come into clinic to see their trusted healthcare provider to prepare for that clinic visit? Could we help diabetes centers and other clinics um, uh, you know, send assessments or patient reported outcome surveys at uh, just the right time um, you know, in the context of their care journey, et cetera, et cetera? So I think we're uh, in a perfect position to do that. And those are the things we're looking at today. Yeah, Dr. Clemens, thanks for bringing that up. I think the behavior piece is the holy grail of population health, really. But on, in a broader sense, as we think about behavior, obviously, some of it has to do with the you know, social terms of health, where people live, what they can access, et cetera. How are you looking to address some of those issues in terms of access to this technology, maybe in disadvantaged populations? Yeah, so this is a topic that's uh, near and dear to my heart. So I'm very proud to say that Gluco has a uh, social responsibility group and program. And uh, we are, in fact, uh, supporting um, several organizations out there that are uh, serving underserved populations. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, populations that are receiving care, for instance, from uh, federally qualified health centers. Uh, Gluco has um, you know, made our platform available um, to those centers that might not otherwise have access for their populations. I would also point out that as we explore precision engagement approaches on our platform, one of the uh, no-brainer opportunities uh, to me, one of the things that uh, I'm very interested to see in the future and that I hope I can uh, uh, successfully uh, pitch for is that uh, we, we should have the opportunity on our platform for clinicians to screen uh, their patients for social determinants of health because there are uh, digital tools out there uh, that 
uh, we can connect patients to from our platform uh, to help them find the resources they need in their own community. Uh, that to me is a sort of no brainer and uh, something that we, again, uh, we don't offer today, but I hope we can explore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, particularly as you think about this disease and its impact on disadvantaged populations in this country, just enormous. So the ability to get them access to services like you have obviously can have a profound difference on that population. That's right. Yeah. And um, just, you know, one final note, as as you grow this out, do you do you you've talked about expanding some are and, you know, maybe to heart conditions, things like that. Are there other areas where you think nobody's really taken a look at this yet, but it might have some benefit? Well, I think the um, the areas of behavioral health are probably the biggest ones. I think that there's a deep tie in between um, health related behaviors or health promoting behaviors and the mental health of individuals with chronic disease. So I would say that uh, uh, looking eventually at how we can address some of the uh, mental health issues that interact with uh, chronic physiologic disease like diabetes uh, are going to be very important. And again, I think we're perfectly positioned to do so. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, first we're looking at conditions like hypertension and cardiovascular disease, but I think it'll be a, a, a natural evolution. Well, that's a fantastic way to end this show. I think we hit diabetes, social determinants of health, a little bit of health equity, and finally mental health as well, which are really key issues. Thank you so much, Dr. Clements, for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Well, I, I really appreciate your time. I thank you for the opportunity. I just want to say that uh, I thank all the individuals out there uh, with, with diabetes and chronic disease who are working so hard every day uh, to try to improve their health and all the care teams out there trying to help them. So thank you very much. It's our pleasure. And back to you, Greg. And thank you, Fred. That is the last word on today's broadcast. I want to thank Dr. Mark Clements, the Chief Medical Officer at Gluco, for his time and many insights today. Do follow his work on Twitter via at drdrmark, M-A-R-K, and at Gluco Inc., that's G-L-O-O-K-O-I-N-C, respectively, and on the web via www.gluco.com. And finally, if you're enjoying our work at Pop Health Week, please like the show on the podcast platform of your choice. Do share with your colleagues and consider subscribing to keep up with new episodes as they're released. We stream live on Healthcare Now Radio weekdays at 5.30 a.m., 1.30 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. Eastern. And for you left coasters at 2.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and 6.30 p.m. Pacific. For Pop Health Week, my co-host Fred Goldstein, this is Greg Masters saying, please stay safe everyone. Bye now.